Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up as that will help grow my channel. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd appreciate that as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those and I will respond. Again, thank you. So for this week's project, I'm going to pick a piece of elm that's live edge. And this is one that I had previously shown in another video that had been twice turned, meaning that I have turned this down thinner, less than an inch, and let it dry for a year uh, just to prevent any cracking. Here you can see it's mounted in the lathe, and I'm just going to go ahead and shape both the outside and the inside. Here I am just shaping the outside of this bowl. Now this bowl again was turned once before and I was pretty happy with the shape so therefore I didn't have to change it very much. So it did not take me very long. I was probably about a half an hour doing both the outside and the inside getting them to their final shape. This video is really going to focus more on what I do after I get it to shape and the finishing process. Normally in most of my videos when I get to the point where I begin to sand I'll tell you that I start at 60 grit and I work my way up through 600. But there's actually a bit more than that to it so I'm going to really show that in this video. Here you can see I'm starting to sand after I've shaped it and I typically start with sheet paper again which is 60 grit and at this point I'm just trying to work out any scratches or gouges that I may have. At this point I will stop it quite frequently and check the progress just to make sure that I don't have any scratches. Now I try to avoid switching from sandpaper back to the tool because you don't want to sand and spend a lot of time sanding and then pick up a tool and then use the tool and basically take away all the work that you did sanding. But sometimes I do. Sometimes I will sand and as I sand then it becomes more obvious areas that need a little bit more attention. Maybe a gouge or something that's a little deeper that I can't sand out. So I'll just touch that lightly with the tool after I've done some sanding. Here I am doing some power sanding. Again, I'm stopping once in a while. Here I'm pointing out the areas where it's still a little bit rough, maybe a bit of tear out. You've heard me talk about tear it again in previous videos. And here I'm just touching those up. Often they're very difficult to get rid of, especially by sanding. So here I just touched it with the tool very, very lightly and then go back over and sand those trouble spots. Now I thought on this video I would do it completely with voiceover and not stopping, stopping and talking, but uh, here I am. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a little divot right there. It was probably a branch or something like that, and it's come out. So now I have a dilemma. Do I leave it or do I try and fill it? In this case, I think I'm going to fill it. It is sharp. Uh, I don't know that it's that visible, but it is sharp, and it does so it doesn't feel good. So I'm going to fill it. You've got two options. You can go uh, make it accentuate it, like with a red or a blue epoxy, something like that. But where this is a natural edge bowl, I've got bark here and here. I think I'm going to try and hide it. I'm going to fill it. Uh, same as I did last week in my video, I'm going to fill it with coffee grinds and super glue so that it will not be seen at all. Coffee will end up looking much like this color here, so it'll look quite natural and it'll just give it, it'll be able to smooth it out. So I'm, that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So here I'm applying the the CA glue 
And the CA glue does a good job at giving structural integrity to the material. Then I just press coffee grinds into it and then hit it with accelerator. That just helps it to dry up almost instantly so that I can begin sanding right away. Again, at this point, I typically just use some sheet paper until I get rid of any excess glue and coffee grinds that are sticking proud of the surface. And then maybe just power sand a little bit. You'll notice here that I'm power sanding it with the lathe stopped. The reason I do this is because I've fixed one spot, as that's spinning on the lathe, if I'm using sandpaper or power sanding, it'll tend to bounce every time it hits that, which will end up creating a low spot on the other side of it. So oftentimes I'll use power sanding with the lathe stop just to get rid of the high spot so that I remove the bounce. Again, I'm back. So the inside of the bowl has been sanded uh, just to 60 grit, just to smooth out any any tool marks. Uh, it's, it's pretty it's pretty smooth though. But you're going to see again another crack here, and I've seen it all along. It doesn't go all the way through, so I wasn't concerned about the structural integrity of it. But again, it needs to be filled. It's it's deep and it's wide. Definitely couldn't leave it, so I have to fill it. So I'm going to use the uh, coffee and super glue again, and I will fill that. Uh, you'll see now, too, the other one is done and been sanded, and it is smooth as can be. And I don't think if I, unless I told you, I don't think you'd even notice that, that wasn't just a normal feature in the bowl itself. And I think this crack in here will, will be the same. There's discoloration around it. You see the cracks are already dark in color, so I think by filling it, it'll blend in quite nicely as well. So there it is. Uh, the good news is it doesn't mask it, obviously, when I fix it with the coffee. It's still very noticeable, but it was black to start with. It is pretty smooth. Uh, it's hard to see. That's filled in there. There's a little bit right there that is not, so I'm going to put another coat on it but overall I think that uh, turned out quite well. So just so you know by putting the glue in there the super glue CA glue that uh, will give it a structural integrity that'll make it a strong or stronger than the wood was originally so there's no concern there with uh, any damage on the lathe. Uh, the coffee is just there mixed in with it just to give it color. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the way that repair turned out. You can see there maybe now, there's still a little bit more that I need to fill. And, uh, and then sand it down a little bit more, but I think it's going to look pretty good. So this is something I haven't talked about before. Uh, first of all, that crack is, is filled really nice. But you see these right here. That's a bit of tear out, and I think I'm getting a bit of bounce too, because this is hard. This is going to be a bit harder than the surrounding wood. So as this spins around, it hits this, and the sandpaper bounces a bit, so I'm not getting into that like I should. Now, I could put a finish on that and call it good, but you're going to see it. Uh, you might have to look hard, and maybe the untrained eye won't see it, but I certainly will. So I've got a couple options. Continue to try and sand it. And I am getting a bit of a ripple there, which again, I think is coming from the bounce from here. Or I go back to the tool and I try and remove that line, that line, that line, that one, and that one. You, you run the risk of putting the tool to this now, that you make it worse. Uh, and But I also don't know that I'm gonna be able to sand it. So I think I'll try my scraper just with a real, real light touch. See if I can diminish that a little bit before I give it another coat of sanding. So I'm ready to move on. Uh, I ended up that I just sanded it. I did not put a tool up against it. Uh, not in that spot at least. 
I did right at the very bottom here. But uh, again, just to talk about this, at this point, I've sanded with 60 grit. And I want to make sure that there's no lines left, there's no spots that need to be fixed before I move on to the next grit. So you got to spend the time. Once I get to this point, I'll move up through the grits fairly quickly. I turned this bowl in a less than a half hour. I've spent an hour working on sanding it and filling that crack. So on this bowl, I've spent a lot more time in the finishing part than I have in the turning. Again, at this point in the video, I typically just say that I'm using my uh, abrasive paste and polishing paste and skip over it. I will give a little bit more detail. So I did do a video up of how I made this homemade abrasive paste and polishing paste. So typically I apply the abrasive paste first on the lathe with it stopped. The only reason for that is if you turn it on uh, while you're applying it, it just tends to throw it across the room. So I'll rub it in a little bit with the lathe stopped. And then once it's rubbed in, then I will rub it with the paper towel. So again, I've mentioned this before, but I rub it in and then change the cloth and keep going until it's clean before I put on the polishing paste. You can see that this darkens the wood up really well and really starts to make it shine. So because of the bark right here and here, I ended up putting spray lacquer on top of what I on top of the polish that I'd put on. Normally if it wasn't for that bark I would have just went with the uh, abrasive paste and the abrasive polish but because of that bark which I can't obviously rub any friction finishes on then I sprayed it with lacquer. But you can see here now it's shiny as glass a nice smooth surface all around and this bowl is finished. I put four coats of the lacquer thinner on it. So here's this week's finished product. I think it turned out quite well. I'm glad that I was able to maintain the uh, live edge here on the, with the bark on the outside. Uh, you can see the repair inside there where we, we talked about in the video. It's, it's unrecognizable and as smooth as, smooth as glass. I've also engraved my logo on the bottom of the bowl. This bowl is for sale. And uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Uh, if you want to be entered into the contest, leave a comment saying contest in the comments. And uh, when I reach 500 subscribers, we will be doing a draw for a bowl. So thank you very much.